Assalamu alaikum, my dear students. This is Professor Muhammad Atikur Rahman conducting your class. As you know, I am just taking your one chapter like insect reproduction. So, so far I can remember I explained in our previous class what is insect reproductions, types of insect reproductions, right? So, for your better understanding, I would like to repeat again. What is insect reproduction? If you just recall your brain, you can find it is a biological process through which insects reproduce their offspring and continue their generations. And I told you that there are two ways by which insects reproduce, right? So that is asexual and sexual reproductions. These asexual reproductions can also be classified under pedogenesis, polyembryony, parthenogenesis. This parthenogenesis also classified into three classes, sporadic, constant, and cyclic. So, uh, these asexual reproductions that means the pedogenesis i told you that by this reproduction sexually mature larvae are able to produce young without fertilizations i repeat sexually mature larvae are able to repro reproduce young without fertilizations as for examples i told you gall mage right gall mage larvae they are able to produce the dot, uh, daughter larvae from the unfertilized egg that is able to produce male and female. Can you remember? So polyembryony, polyembryony two, poly means more than two. So two or more embryos are produced from single fertilized egg that is called the polyembryony. And it is very common in parasitic hymenopterans. As for example, I told you braconids, calcites, etc. Parthenogenesis is a form of asexual reproductions as you know in which growth and development of embryos occur without fertilizations. The young develops without benefit of male. So uh, this parthenogenesis classified as a sporadic like insect occasionally reproducing parthenogenetically in spite of occurrence of males are included in these categories as for example i told you can you remember that silkworm moth right and also locust are the examples of sporadic parthenogenesis and constant parthenogenesis some insects reproduce parthenogenetically constantly or at such frequency that it is regarded as a constant features Stick insects, member of Thysanopterus, are the examples of constant parthenogenesis. So, cyclic parthenogenesis, some species reproduce exclusively by parthenogenesis, while other can switch between sexual reproduction and parthenogenesis. It happens for favorable seasons or by lack of male, as for example, aphids. So uh, these are uh, the asexual reproductions so far I can remember I told you in our previous class and I also mentioned that sexual reproductions actually as you know sexual reproductions in the uh, very beginning I told you this is a biological process by which insect create descendants that have a combination of genetic materials contributed from two usually different members of the species right so these uh, uh, sexual reproductions are classified as oviparous ovoviviparous and viviparous sexual reproductions so what is oviparous reproductions in oviparous types of reproductions can you remember i told you this example of grasshoppers right uh, already in your practical class, uh, I, I have shown you uh, that uh, eggs are hatched out of the body and no other embryonic development within this mother they have. So you have to remember that they just lay egg outside and then the young comes out after hatching. So there is no any other relationships within the mother body 
uh, or, or no other embryonic development within this mother. So as, as for example, grasshopper I told you. So viviparous reproduction, in viviparous reproduction, the fertilized egg, that means zygote, being retained within the uterus of the female, where it is nourished, eventually leading to leave birth, as opposite to laying eggs, that means just opposite uh, to the oviparous reproductions. So as for example, Cersei fly, and um, you can also pronounce uh, Cersei fly is a very commonly uh, we always pronounce, right? So, ovoviviparous reproduction, another type of uh, uh, sexual reproduction. In this reproduction, embryo is developed inside the eggs. Please, I repeat. Embryo is developed inside the eggs that are retained within mother's body until they are ready to hatch. Until they are ready to hatch and no place placental connection is placed so this is very important no placental connection is placed so unborn youngs are nourished by egg yak as for example citrus millibug so it was um, i so far i can remember that uh, in our previous class i explained uh, very well and you guys can remember uh, that uh, this one properly <clears throat> another one you see now i would like to start my another slide that means another topic male and female reproductive system of male and female reproductive system of um, grasshopper right so uh, as you know that uh, male reproductive system the male reproductive system of grasshopper is located in the posterior portion of the abdomen and typically consists of a pair of gonads that means testes another one is different ducts they have vas deferens vas deferens seminal vesicle and ejaculatory duct Number three, accessory glands, and last one, adiagus or penis that I told you. In the practical class, I explained properly this one, but I would like to uh, repeat it because as a part of our uh, theoretical, theoretical class, uh, so it will be very easy to make you understand that um, the male reproductive system, just look, the different parts over here I explained and uh, the structures of male reproductive system of uh, grasshopper you can see this is the terminal filament that means uh, suspensory ligaments also called because many filament combinedly form the ligament so this ligament came each of the testicular follicles and these a number of testicular follicles form these testes so this is a testis and a pair of testes over here a pair of testes you can see this part uh, one another one is two so a pair of testes uh, that means a pair of gonads and the different ducts i mean each of every follicle has connected with the lateral this lateral this lateral duct so lateral common duct that is also called the vas difference so testicular follicle connect with the vas efference and that vas efference connected with the vas difference and this vas difference then connected with the ejaculatory duct that means coming over here ejaculatory duct you can see is a collatory duct and uh, then is a collatory duct the inner portions of the penis so it is, it is the intermittent organ and this is the a number of you can see accessory glands are here 16 accessories 
uh, tubes combining from this gland. This, some are long tubules, some are short tubules. Yeah, some are short, some are long tubules. Okay. And another dilated portions that is called the seminal vesicles you can find within the accessory glands over here. <clears throat> so uh, these are the structures that I uh, explained but you should know each and every uh, part's functions that means the testes. So what is the testes, what is the testicular follicles, uh, how they connect the nutrition, uh, nutritional functions you have to know it. So the testes are usually as you know the uh, bilateral and paired structures. Each testis is composed of a varying number of testicular follicles, that means sperm tubes, which are usually encased by a layer of connective tissues. Each follicle is in turn enclosed by a layer of epithelial cells, which are thought to serve a trophic functions. So, uh, in particular, I told you that trophic functions means that nutritive functions, those who supply the nutrition. And also absorbing nutrients from the uh, hemolymph and making them available to the germ cells within. Each follicle is divided epically to vasally into different zones, eventually give rise from germ cells to spermatogonia. Or I will explain it later. That means when I will explain spermatogenesis, I will let you know the different zones like uh, germarium, zone of growth, zone of maturation, reductions, and zone of transformations. And I, I already mentioned the ducts, different name of ducts, bus difference, bus difference, seminal vesicle, ejaculatory duct. So the name of different ducts I explained over here, you see, uh, name of follicles. So tiny ducts, the very tiny ducts, that means the bus difference that is lead to from each follicle to a common lateral duct, that means bus difference. And finally, the bus difference uh, from the each test is joined to form the ejaculatory duct which ends in the penis or edigas at the gonopore. The vas difference are of ectodermal origin and are hence linked with the cuticle. Both the vas difference and ejaculatory duct are invested with a layer of muscles which are involved in the propulsions of semen. So as you know uh, that uh, uh, each vas difference may be thrown into the series of convolutions forming a epidermis or have a dilated portions that i told you that seminal vesicle in which the spermatozoa are stored in a quiescent state so this is the uh, explanations of different ducts and uh, the functions of accessory glands over here uh, i uh, i would like to mention properly that the, to produce the or the accessory glands just secretes or produces uh, the seminal fluid. So what is seminal fluid? When sperm mix with the dense fluid that is secreted from the accessory glands. So that is called the semen. So that seminal fluid uh, that means dense fluid mix with the sperm that is uh, coming from the uh, testes commonly from the semen. That semen runs through the uh, ejaculatory duct, that means uh, through the penis, that means intermittent organ into the female genitalia. So in a nutshell, if I just summarize this process of uh, male uh, reproductive system, so you can say the produce spermatozoa, that means from the testes, and I, uh, from uh, unidentified male germ cells or spermatogonia in testicular follicles are released through the ducts like a vas efferens, vas deferens and sometimes stored in the seminal vesicle in equation state. Besides seminal fluid secreting from the accessory glands mixed with the spermatozoa forming semen and eject by ejaculatory duct to female reproductive opening that means vagina through male intermittent organ that means adiagas or penis during copulations. So this is uh, in brief the process of male reproductive systems. So please now uh, come to the female reproductive system. Already in the practical class I explained uh, properly the female reproductive system. 
So a female reproductive system is located in the posterior part of the abdomen and typically consists of a pair of gonads, ducts, that means pedicel, calyx, lateral oviduct, common oviduct, vagina, accessory glands. They have also a female reproductive system also they have uh, accessory glands and spermatheca with spermatheal glands. So these are the uh, structures you can find uh, properly over here you can see um, accessory glands of the female they remain just apical portions right that is the accessory glands and uh, from the ovary they have also a pair of uh, ovarules suppose you can see one two this is one pair uh, one pair of ovary you can find over here i told a pair of gonads that means ovaries so a pair of ovaries over here that is consist of a number of ovarules and each ovarules they have the terminal filament these are the terminal filament you can find commonly from the terminal or suspensory ligaments so one by one i am just uh, explaining so ovaries the ovaries are bilaterally located mesodermal origin which produce eggs they are composed of a number of functional units ovarules which are invested in a layer of epithelial cells that means a pair of ovaries a pair of ovaries are present in the female reproductive system a terminal thread that i told you uh, that means a filament from the cephalad portions of the ovaries joins those of its neighbors forming a terminal filament which attached to the dorsal diaphragm the ovaries are divided into zones which contain germ cells or oocytes in various stages of developmental and maturations those are finally for mature ovum basically uh, there are two such zones apical germarium and basal vitellarium i will explain it when i will explain the uh, oogenesis in my next portions of lectures so come to the different ducts different ducts already i mentioned over here pedicel, calyx, lateral oviduct, common oviduct, vagina. At the base of each ovarule, at the base of each ovarule is a small duct or pedicel which joins those of the other ovarules in valvoas calyx which in turn opens into the lateral oviduct. The lateral oviduct which are like the ovaries of mesodermal origin join to form the common oviduct. You can see this is the uh, lateral oviduct and these are the ovarules. So this lateral oviduct come from the both side coming together and form the common oviduct. So this is the common oviduct you can see uh, lateral oviduct uh, ultimately. The common oviduct serves as a communicating tube between the lateral oviducts and vagina which open to the outside which open to the outside you can see uh, in the uh, figure so uh, another one important thing is accessory glands that remains the apical part of the um, system there are generally one pair of those structures which usually open into the apical portions of the vagina the functions of these glands are to secrete the adhesive materials and serve to cement eggs to the substrum or materials that coat the surface of eggs or hold them together in masses. So another one is you can see the spermatheca, very important one. Uh, sometimes in the viva we ask the students, uh, spermatheca present in male or female reproductive systems. Of course, uh, you, some students are confused because the term sperm over here, so they first recognize maybe it will be in the male reproductive system. So answer will be wrong. So it's, a, it's in the female reproductive system, spermatica, right? So you can see the another one. These are the, this is the spermatica, uh, but, and behind this one, 
spermatical gland connected just dorsal portion of the vagina. So this is usually a single out pocketing from the vagina or common oviduct in which spermatozoa which have been introduced as a result of copulation are stored prior to fertilizations. Okay. So this out pocketing is called the spermatica. It is attached with a gland which is called the spermatical gland and this spermatical gland nourishes the sperm when sperms are stored in the spermatica. Okay. Uh, so remember this one and also maintaining the sperm after copulations. Uh, these are the functions of spermatica. So like the previous uh, male reproductive system I told you in brief the process of male reproductive system again over here I am let uh, I am letting you know the process of uh, female reproductive system in brief okay during copulation vagina receives the male intermittent organ that means adiagas that release the semen these semens are stored into the spermatheca after receiving over here they store in the spermatheca okay and ovum comes from the ovaries ovum comes from the ovaries so ovum comes from the ovaries uh, through lateral oviduct by peristaltic movement from here by lateral oviduct by lateral oviduct uh, peristaltic movement uh, and stay in common oviduct mixing with adhesive materials and that adhesive materials just uh, as you know releasing uh, from the uh, accessory glands I told you uh, and then spermatozoa comes from the spermatheca and fertilizes the ovum in common oviduct or vagina so ultimately uh, the fertilizations occurs over here right in the common oviduct or vagina so sometimes we ask in the viva voce so these are the actually the male and female reproductive systems that I uh, explained to you. So in the next lectures, I'd like to mention spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So uh, I, I hope it would be better if I continue because there is a relation of spermatogenesis and oogenesis with the male and female reproductive systems. So it would be better uh, for your better understanding, okay. So spermatogenesis, as you know spermatogenesis, genesis means, that means uh, to synthesis or to uh, just form of something. So spermatogenesis means uh, sperm formations, na? the process of sperm formations. The testicular follicles contains, as you know, uh, the germ cells. And hence, the site of the reduction divisions, that means meiosis, which eventually give rise to spermatozoa, the entire process being referred to as spermatogenesis. But in brief, if you would like to say, the formations of the process by which sperm is produced. If you say like this, your answer will be okay. In most insects, each follicle contains a large apical cell, which some other have an apical complex of cells which apparently serve a trophic functions i told you trophic means uh, just nutritive functions providing nutritions for the developing spermatogonia each follicle is divided apically to vasally into different zones below different zones uh, below that represents the different stages of spermatogenesis you can see over here you can see over here mm. okay just I am showing you by marking I marked over here one two three four you can see so these are the stages and this is a you can see a testicular this is a testicular follicle that means a number of testicular follicles are present in a testis so i have just showing you one testicular follicle over here so this testicular follicle start from top this is the top portions this is the top portions 
so one two three four like this so germarium zone of uh, sometimes we also call the spermatogonia so what is spermatogonia spermatogonia is just undifferentiated male germ cells nothing else okay so another one is second one zone of growth zone of maturation you can see zone of transformation so these are the stages of spermatogenesis so i am explaining uh, shortly i will explain don't be worried epically they begin with the germarium or zone of spermatogonia which is comprised of the germ cell that means spermatogonia i told you undifferentiated male germ cells okay and somatic mesodermal cells in the next region you can see the zone of growth or zone of spermatocytes uh, the sp uh, spermatogonia undergoes several mitotic divisions forming spermatocytes spermatocytes means the cell of sperm cell which become encysted in somatic cells these diploid cells undergo the reduction divisions of meiosis and produce haploid daughter cells and you can see already it is mentioned with spermatogonia and spermatocytes next spermat uh, spermatocytes uh, so then sp spermatids spermatids that means in the zone of maturations in the meiosis so it will be the n right so the previous one was twice n so with the first and second reduction uh, division the spermatocytes become primary and secondary spermatids respectively so it will be the uh, first one will be primary second one is the secondary uh, uh, sper uh, spermatids in the basal zone of transformation the secondary sperm in, the, in this zone uh, the secondary spermatids become transformed into the flagellated uh, spermatozoa. Flagellated spermatozoa, you can see. Flagellated spermatozoa, uh, they are uh, released, right? So, in brief, we can say this process from germarium to zone of transformations, undifferentiated germ cells will be a mature sperm that means spermatozoa so the formation of a spermatozoa or mature sperm from a undifferentiated male germ cells is called the spermatogenesis so this is all about the spermatogenesis uh, Just I am showing you that I explained in the previous one, spermatogenesis. You can see uh, twice n uh, in the germarium, twice n undifferentiated germ cell, twice n zone of growth, twice n, and then zone of maturations. It will be it will be meiosis, so uh, haploid cell. It will be haploid, and zone of transformation over here. Uh, it will be like this and mature. Uh, sperma sperm will be or spermatozoa will be released so you can see over here um, from from the undifferentiated germ cells the mature sperm is produced so this process is called the spermatogenesis okay now come to the last topic oogenesis just think about the female reproductive system there were a pair of gonads i mean the ovary a pair of ovaries right within the ovary a number of ovarules were present right so the processes which ultimately lead to the development of a mature ovum capable of being fertilized are known as oogenesis. Think about the spermatogenesis, the process by which or ultimately lead to the development of a mature sperm is called the spermatogenesis. Over here, oogenesis, over here. Just I am showing uh, by marking 
this is a uh, ovarials you can see and that is the, the oogenesis so the uh, our the process uh, i repeat the processes which ultimately lead to the development of a mature ovum capable of being fertilized are known as oogenesis the ovarules are divided into are divided into zones which contain germ cells or oocytes over there it was spermatocytes but in the oogenesis it is oocytes in various stages of development and maturations basically there are two such zones of in spermatogenesis there were four zones but in oogenesis basically there are two zones uh, and uh, that is the germarium and the basal vitarium this is the uh, you can say germarium and this one is the vital area mm. this is the germarium and you can say this is the vital area so both above zones are invested in an outer layer of the cells the ovarial shape the germarium contains the primary female germ cells that means ogonia but think about the spermatogenesis that is the spermatogonia so if i ask you what is ogonia so your answer will be undifferentiated female germ cells is called the ogonia okay which undergoes successive mitotic divisions becoming primary oocytes the germarium also contains prefollicular tissues which comes to becoming primary oocytes the germinal also uh, you know the uh, they form the follicular epithelium in the vitellarium the vitellarium is comprised of oocytes which are undergoing the depositions of nutrients a process referred to as a vitellogenesis its develop each developing oocyte is surrounded by a follicular epithelium and these epithelium epithelium cell their functioning is to supply the nutrients as i said before and the oocytes and its associated epithelial layer comprised a comprised a mm, next uh, we can uh, go in the next slide yes is there anything new slide or not okay so you can see uh, this is my another slide types of ovarials but before going to the ovarials i would like to clear another definitions this ovulations so i told you the oocytes in the vitellarium has a progressively more yak in an apical to basal sequence the most mature basal oocyte being separated from the lumen of the pedicel by an epithelial plug which ruptures when the oocytes is ready to leave the ovarial and proceed into the lateral oviduct so this process of exiting from the ovarial is called the ovulations okay so there are three types of ovarials it's just connected with this uh, oogenesis because of uh, as you know there are a number of insects available so in case of female reproductive systems and in the oogenesis uh, the ovarial types of ovarials are varies so uh, first one is polytrophic telotrophic and panoistic so these are uh, three types of uh, ovarials uh, available and i can uh, show you the in the figure you can see uh, and i can mark it also polytrophic uh, polytrophic ovarials have nutritive cells so you can see the polytrophic uh, one this is the polytrophic number one figure polytrophic and they have the nutritive cells or trophocytes associated with each developing oocytes please look at over here each and every each and every uh, uh, developing oocytes they have the different trophocytes surrounding them they have different trophocytes different trophocyte layer of trophocytes so these trophocytes are within the layer of cells the follicular epithelium which surrounds each oocytes 
a follicular plug exists between each oocyte with its accompanying trophocytes. So polytrophic ovules have been described in the Neuroptera, Lepidoptera, some you can say Coleopterans, Dipteran and Hymenopteran order insects. Uh, you can find the polytrophic uh, ovarules. Uh, just uh, you can find this one. But uh, the telotrophic, this is the telotrophic one. You can see number C. Telotrophic ovarules are different from the polytrophic. Just you can compare with each other. Uh, in that trophocytes are not directly associated with each developing oocytes. Over here, each and every oocytes are connected with the trophocytes. But look over here in that telotrophic. Telo means top. You see over here. So there is a um, um, not directly associated with the developing oocytes, but all. Uh, located in the apical region of the ovariole and are connected to the various oocytes by means of nutritive cords. Please just look at over here. This is a nutritive cord uh, up to this, this nutritive cord up to this. So, uh, these nutritive, uh, by these nutritive cords, uh, they just uh, supply the nutrients each and every oocytes. So, telotrophic ovarioles are characteristics of the hemiptera and some of the coleopteran insects. And uh, sometimes polytrophic and telotrophic ovarioles are collectively referred as a meristic ovarioles. Okay, uh, meristic ovarioles. So, peneustic, the last one, the over here you can see the peneustic one. So, these ovarioles has no trophocytes, you can say, uh, has no trophocytes. Each developing oocyte is surrounded by a follicular epithelium. They have follicular, you can see it, a follicular epithelium, follicular epithelium, follicular epithelium. So by this follicular epithelium and follicular plug exist between adjacent oocytes. So penistic ovarioles are found in the ateridocortes. Orthoptera, Isoptera, Odonata, Plecoptera, Siphonoptera, and some other Coleopteran insects. So, my dear students, so you can uh, uh, find this sort of uh, uh, examples within this one. So, in the next class, if you have any questions, you can comment in my link. I will try to uh, solve it in my next lectures. Of your uh, questions because uh, I am uploading for your betterment. Uh, if I go uh, sit for the Zoom uh, online meeting, so Zoom meeting, the sound system and the connection problems, net network fluctuations. That's why I am uploading my uh, videos for your betterment. Uh, just let me know if it will uh, work well or not. Then I will change myself. Uh, no problem. And uh, I hope. Uh, if you need the lecture notes, uh, I can provide it, no problem, uh, that I have given you. In, I will upload it in my uh, profile. If you ask me, then I will pro uh, provide it, no problem. So thank you very much uh, for your patience. Um, and I hope all of you will be good, uh, inshallah, and try to follow the safety measures, uh, health safety measures and uh, uh, wishing you the best. Thank you very much.